Welcome to the Stoic Thunder Podcast, taking an ancient philosophy for a 21st century test drive, learning on the way. For me, it's hard to imagine a more inclusive and humanly applicable philosophy than that of Stoicism. Most of the ancient texts and modern Stoicism's most popular books have been written by men, and certainly the ones I've read. You'll find translations differ slightly from one copy to another, but I found within all of them, whether it's something in the language or the context that just speaks to, or at least has the potential to appeal to anyone who has ever taken a breath. I count myself as a proud egalitarian, but in online discourse in particular, there does seem to be a stance that certain people take, whether it is within the context of a disagreement, or when it appears to be a genuinely held position, that a person's physical form has much bearing on their intellectual capability and merits. I'll go further on this subject in a future podcast, but for now I want to concentrate on use of makeup and perception in particular when it comes to women. I have a YouTube friend who is very popular, in my opinion very beautiful physically, but even more importantly has a wonderful personality a keen mind, and a very loving nature. She is often chastised, judging by the nature of the comments, by people who disagree with her positions and content, about her makeup in particular. Not necessarily about the colours and techniques she uses, which of course would be a subjective opinion and perhaps an interesting discussion to be had separately, but the fact that she's wearing it at all, why she wears it, and how much. The irony is that she could be wearing quite a bit of makeup in perhaps more toned down colours, and the lighting that she uses to film herself would render it almost indiscernible. So is its visibility the issue? Because your inability to tell how many pigments are resting on her skin says nothing about whether they are present or not. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. Marcus Aurelius This quote has so many applications, so it won't be the last time I'll be referencing it, but it's actually the second part that struck me in regards to beauty. Physical human attributes in particular. Now, attraction is largely an unconscious thing, so it would be foolish to judge people for their preferences, but in regards to makeup, I find it intriguing that there are those who would judge those who wear it of attempting to put across a false pretense or perspective of their features in particular. The beauty industry and the ever-increasing focus and distortion of the self, especially in regards to females, will again be the topic of another episode, but the artistry and the manipulation of form is what I'm interested in here. You may have seen amazing before and after photos online, or videos of YouTube makeup artists sculpting their way to high cheekbones, a slimmer nose, or even to make their eye shape look different, or increase the size of their lips. It's fascinating to watch even if you're of the mind of enhancing what you already have. Powders, liquids, pencils and creams are used in this way, utilising tricks of the light, dimensions and playing with shadows. They don't structurally change the face, even if they give the illusion of doing so. A painting is formed with layers on a blank canvas. The face is not blank. It has texture, contours, and is subject to daily, if not hourly, changes. Heat, cold, pressure oils, moisture. The structure of the skin changes so rapidly, as is how it reacts with whatever lays atop of it. Some things are genetic and we can choose to embrace them or cover them up, but in doing so are we expressing a false perspective? I'm the same person that went to sleep last night and now has woken with dark circles. If I choose to cover them up, am I being false? They weren't there yesterday, or certainly not as bad. In choosing to give myself a more uniform appearance, for whatever reason, I am not creating a false version of myself, just one that I can control. If our skin and its structure is changing all the time, who can say when I'm the real me? The lack of sleep creating the dark circles, and the good night's sleep giving a healthy glow, can produce stark differences, but which one is the real me? They both are because I choose to attempt to put forth a well-rested look, depending completely on how I feel, does not speak to the inexact appearance I may, in other people's opinion, be exhibiting. Judgments and opinions, how unreliable they can be, 
and indeed how damaging, feature in Stoic literature a great deal, and it's not hard to see why. Feeling just when you hold an opinion enough to express it is a powerful aspect of free speech. But next time, before you comment, try to know or at least question your perceptions. You owe yourself that, and I'm sure the recipient would appreciate it too. Join me in the next episode, where I'll be talking about love. Stoically speaking, of course.